Hello and welcome. In this video, we talk about the TOEFL speaking and how to study for the TOEFL overall so that you're noticing improvement week by week. So welcome to TOEFL Talk with Noteful, episode number three. I'm Joseph from Noteful, very excited to be with you. And so as usual, uh, I hope that you're now comfortable with the series, getting a sense of it. I just want to show you with the image on the left, when you click on the link below this video, you'll be taken to a page on our site, noteful.com, right, designed to help you with the TOEFL, where you can record what it is in about 45 seconds that you need the most help with. So in this TOEFL talk series, remember we want to be very specific to what you need help with and in a way that's conversational because the idea is that this is meant to support you and other students looking for the biggest improvements. And so you'll see that today when we talk about some of the questions that were submitted. So you're going to be studying for the TOEFL for at least three weeks, up to three months, maybe six to nine months, because you're looking for serious improvements, for top scores that you're required to get. And as I said before, you may be on this journey for years. So no matter what, it's my pleasure to tell you that you're on track to success. Keep studying hard. You will get your dream score. And so this TOEFL Talk series is meant to guide you so you study the material that you have in a way that's more effective and efficient. So this is something kind of extra. So it's not designed to be TOEFL training or TOEFL practice as much as talking you through how to do what you need to do, how to change your mindset over weeks and months so that you stay on track. You don't study off and on, you know, maybe a couple weeks you study hard, a couple weeks you don't but you stay strong until the end to get your dream score as quick as possible. And so again, I'm very excited to hear from you and you are basically the whole member, every kind of member of the Noteful, the family, the community, right? You're those of you who are deep into Noteful with small group tutoring, online classes or diamond course. Those of you who are new to Noteful, maybe hearing about it for the first time, just starting to get used to us or to learn about us on YouTube and how to train. So this is meant to walk you to success. So I hope that makes sense and you know how to record yourself so that our next video, episode four, deals with what you need help with. Very excited to hear from you. So what we've done is we've actually taken about 15 questions all of them coming from our students who are in our online classes mixed in with the questions that we got from students on YouTube. And these questions focus a lot on the speaking. So it's a very important section for many of you. So this video is going to talk about what it takes to improve your score so that you're a whole different level. Remember the TOEFL scores your speaking with a computer focused on pronunciation, delivery, and a human rater focused on your content. So you can imagine your rating is going to be a one, two, three, or four, four being top. So improvement is challenging because you have to improve your entire level. Like you have to improve 25%, 20% before you can start seeing shifts in your score because that means you're going from someone hearing you and giving you a three out of four, which will be around a 22 on the speaking, to a four out of four which will be up to the 30 out of 30. And we're going to talk about how to do that today. Also, students submitted about just questions about their TOEFL studies. And also, we're going to talk about much more about making sure that you're on track. So in the weeks or months in your journey to improve every section, to hit your minimum requirements, your top scores, you have what you need to do it. So let's jump in and look at those questions. As you can imagine, with 15 questions, if we just played one audio recording after another, it would take 15 minutes. So just to be efficient, I've taken some quick notes. It might not be so clear for you, but I want you to take about a minute and a half. I'll give you, yeah, a minute and a half, nice and comfortable, to read through these questions. And you see I divided them into four categories, where the first is very specific to the general idea of improving on the speaking, 
The next group are the specific things that students struggle with, with questions one, two, three, and four on the TOEFL speaking. Uh, the next part is dealing with, you know, pressure and stress, if that influences your performance, was it, which it does for all of us. And then at the end, just a sense of getting awareness of our community, right? There's a lot of people just like you looking for top scores for their careers and their professions, wanting help for every section. So just one minute, 30 seconds to read through this so you get comfortable with what our video today is going to talk about. So starting now. Okay, so you read through and I think you have a sense of what you and our whole community need help with and I think you see some connection, right? So we're going to do a unique training to really cover all of this that I've just highlighted. And so remember that we have, there's plenty of material online for you to study, both free and when you register to join, Noteful or anybody. So this is meant to help you with the material you have. And of course, at the end of the video, if you don't already, I'll show you how to get the intense training at Noteful, both free and registered for more help. So this is meant to guide you on that. So we're moving in this series knowing you have plenty of resources. So it's not the resources that you need help with. It's how to stay on track and use the resources to improve. So a couple things that I'm going to do. The first thing that I want to share with you is this great website, right? Behavioral Economics. And you can imagine that the question number threes and the question number fours on the TOEFL speaking have a lot to do with it. Sometimes you get concepts in biology, art history, but also a lot on business and behavioral economics. So we're going to do a kind of question four, question three hybrid together to improve your skills on everything. And so as you know, we're always focusing on vocabulary, right? So hybrid, I think we have a sense of what that means. So hybrid, specifically in biology, the offspring of two plants of different species or varieties. And so that means the second sense that we use, a thing made by combine, combining two different elements. So we're going to have a hybrid of question three and four to train you on how to take notes, on how to listen, and it's going to be very focused on the vocabulary word we learned in the previous episodes, digest. So just to make sure that we're aware, digest the way that we have it is the focus is on the second meaning, the second sense when we, uh, when we expand everything which is the idea of understand or assimilate by a period of reflection. So if you're having trouble with notes, there is a solution, a real solution. When your notes, when your notes are distracting you, when it's difficult for you to understand your notes, the solution is reflect 
more before you take notes. Because what you have to do is, or what you want to do is remember to listen. You have a lot of pressure because you might be thinking, I have to say everything, but let that go, right? Remember we talked about tunnel vision before, previous episode. We want to avoid that and be open. So we hear the idea, we understand it, then we take notes as a memory tool, as something to help us remember, not something that's going to teach us, right? The only thing that's going to teach us is what we're hearing, is what we're reading. So to help you with that, I want you to take zero notes and listen to me as I read out this behavioral economics um, reading. And what you can do is look away from the screen for now, because the first time I want you to just to hear it from me without looking at the transcript, but of course I put it on the screen so that when you review this video, it's there for you. So no notes, look away from the screen, <sighs> nice and relaxed. Let's listen to our hybrid of question three and four. And what all I want you to do is understand what's this mainly about? Let's just see how much your brain understands. So we begin. Some core ideas in behavioral economics focus on people's propensity to do nothing, as evident in default bias and status quo bias. Inaction may be due to a number of factors, including inertia or anticipated regret. However, sometimes people have an impulse to act in order to gain a sense of control over a situation and eliminate a problem. This has been termed the action bias, for example, a person may opt out or opt for a medical treatment rather than a no treatment alternative, even though clinical trials have not supported the treatment's effectiveness. Action bias is particularly likely to occur if we do something for others or others expect us to act, as illustrated by the tendency for soccer goalkeepers to jump to left or right on penalty kicks even though statistically they would be better off if they just stayed in the middle of the goal. Bar Ellie et al. 2007. Action bias may also be more likely among overconfident individuals or if a person has experienced prior negative outcomes where subsequent inaction would be a failure to do something to improve the situation. And that completes our reading. So when you hear that, Two things might be happening, might be stressed, might be distracted because there's a lot of powerful vocabulary here. But the most important thing is, even without looking at the screen, right? Uh, what I want you to do, let's, let's put digest back up on the screen. I think you have a very clear sense of what this is about. Two words, everything is about what? Action bias. So there is a need for some things to be understood in your brain. It won't really come from your notes when you want a top score. So what you do is you remember you're speaking to build my understanding as a listener, as the grader of action bias. If you think to yourself, I'm going to explain what's in my notes. I got to finish on time. I got to say everything. Fundamentally, we're in trouble. And remember, fundamental is another great vocabulary word. And fundamental means forming a necessary base or core of central importance. So fundamentally, we are not going to get our dream score if we just go through everything. So what happens is the TOEFL is testing you because question three and question four are designed to give you more information than you can say. So if you try to say everything, you fall for the trap and demonstrate you're not digesting, you're not processing or understanding, which is why your score will stay at, let's say, an 18 to a 22, which is a good score, right? That's a high level. But to get to the 24, 26, 28, you have to digest and explain what's most important. So let's take a look at this. Now, in building my understanding of action bias, now you take notes and you recognize the professor, when they gave the lecture, gave a few examples to help you understand action bias, right? So the first thing was a general definition. 
just like the TOEFL, questions three and four, right? This is what they're trying to copy. Academic text, they're trying to create it to see if, they, if you can learn it because this test is designed to test your academic ability in university or graduate school or professionally. So when you look at this, I hope you understood action bias means you have a bias for action, right? So oftentimes, we, we, we hear the words so much that we forget that the words themselves are making it easier for us to understand. So if we remember bias, it's a prejudice in favor or against one thing. So means it means I have a prejudice for action. That means I'm not going to just want to be still. I'm going to want to act. So just from the word action bias, you have an understanding. And even if there's vocabulary you don't know, if you remain open, if you digest, if you just stay present with what's being explained, guaranteed, promise you, the TOEFL is going to explain things so that if you miss a few key words, a few definitions, if you, there's a word you don't know, you can still get 24 to 30 out of 30 because they say things more than once. It's a little repetitive. So when you go here to action bias, they talk about sometimes people have an impulse to act in order to gain a sense, a sense of control. So what you would do is you see how it takes you a little while to know that this is about action bias. Because in the beginning, we actually get the opposite. The reading is introducing us to the idea by talking about the propensity to do nothing. And we know propensity, now with this definition, is a tendency, a habit, like a bias, an inclination, a desire, or natural tendency to behave in a particular way. So here, Behavioral economics focus on people's propensity to do nothing. This is the opposite of action bias. A lot of TOEFL lectures have this format. So if you're just taking notes, hearing everything, by the time you get here, your brain's confused because it has opposing ideas. This lecture is about doing nothing. This lecture is about always doing something. The exact opposite, confusion. So if you listen to everything, and if you listen, you also know that the professor starts to go into detail about action bias, providing an example. So you have a sense that that's what it's about. So even before you start hearing the examples, if you're digesting first, you're not going to get tricked. You're not going to get overly distracted when you hear words like propensity, default bias, status quo bias, inertia, regret, right? All these words that put together can be difficult to follow. But if you remember, remember our, our word from episode two, if you see the forest and don't become distracted by one tree, right? If you listen to the lecture and don't get distracted by a few words you don't understand, now you transform your score because now you can explain from your understanding rather than from the TOEFL purposefully kind of tricking you or leading you in the wrong direction. Now, when you listen, how did they explain action bias? So from your initial hearing, I hope you recognize they gave you what? Several examples, right? That's how they taught you. So the TOEFL, question number three, it teaches you the same way. The reading gives you the title and the definition. You need to read to learn. A lot of students, for example, in small group tutoring, right? I hope your my small group tutoring students are watching this and everybody. What we did was the reading is about 100 words. And to give you a sense, that's about this paragraph here. That's that's the reading. It's much simpler. It's more direct on the TOEFL. But what happens is if you're looking for the sentence with the definition, you're looking at the tree instead of the forest, which means it's going to be, you're not going to know where you are, easily distracted, easily stressed, easily tricked, more easily. 
So you want to read from the beginning as a student learning because what happens is on the TOEFL, right, this is a little tricky. On the TOEFL, they're less tricky, especially for the speaking question number three, question number four, question number two. So as you read, they're going to get right to the point most of the time. So it's kind of like the part that I highlighted. So from the beginning, they start to explain what the definition is. So by the time if you read 40 words carefully, right, it's like 100 words, if you read 40 words carefully, you already have a sense of the, of the definition. You could stop reading and be able to explain it. So the remaining portion is repeating or enhancing the idea. So if you're overly concentrated on one sentence, you lose the support of the whole paragraph which is repetitive and is giving you the idea. So our strategy we teach you is to focus on a key sentence. But remember, we always teach you comprehension first, strategy second. So you're reading, learning, using your fluency and your strategy to help you. So from the first, the first time you listened, you do need to know if you're going to get your dream score. This is about action bias. And I hope you do need to have a sense it was explained through several examples. What are some of those? So one of them is kind of pretty interesting, right? Because all of you are academic professionals. So if you listen and read as a student, your curiosity, I think, will be so strong that that's going to tremendously help you to stay focused, engaged, and comprehend. Because there is a research paper that says soccer goalkeepers, right? So soccer goalkeepers, so we call it soccer in the U.S., right? So these people responsible for stopping the ball from going into the net, research has been done, and they have a tendency, a propensity, a bias to jump left or right on penalty kicks. So a penalty kick, right, as you may or may not know, is at the end of the game, if the score is tied and there must be a winner, uh, players take turns just trying to kick the ball, the soccer ball, into the net. So it's just one player and the goalie, right? So those are penalty kick situations. And you can Google penalty kick, go on YouTube, penalty kick, and you'll have an immediate idea of that. So even though statistically they would be better off if they just stayed in the middle. So what does this mean? It means that goalies, what do they have? They have these two words. They have an action bias. And does that help them or hurt them? It hurts them because they, they don't want to do nothing. What they want to do is, okay, so when they see the, the player move, they jump to the right or to the left. And statistically, supposedly from this research paper, right, if you play soccer or football, as it's called everywhere else outside the U.S., you may disagree, but this paper shows statistically if they just stay still, wait for the kick, they'll do better to block the goal. So you see this illustration. It really is an illustration of the definition. So the interesting thing is a lot of students say, what happens if in question number three or in question number four, I don't understand something, I don't get the key idea? That question, it can happen. And you can still do well because missing one or two things isn't the end of the world for your answer because you have 60 seconds to explain something. But what happens is you forget the example in question number three, the lecture, and in question number four, the format is topic, subtopic, example, subtopic, example. The examples are meant to illustrate, to teach. So if your reading is tough and you don't get it, then you become even more curious, even more aware of digesting, of not taking so many notes, of listening to understand first because it's going to teach you if you made a mistake. And that's the benefit. And then once you understand it, even if you're not perfect, if you explain it the best you can, you will satisfy the requirement because your answer 
won't be a list of things you heard. It will be an explanation of the idea you were taught. And that is a four out of four. That is what they're listening for. Not details, but the idea. Then we have another example, if you see here. Uh, overcom or not so much an example, but maybe an illustration. Overconfident individuals. And that makes sense, right? It makes intuitive sense. So intuitive, the definition, using or based on what one feels to be true, even without conscious reasoning, instinctive. So it's kind of natural to assume that likely someone who is shy, would they have action bias? They could, they could, but what would you assume? Probably if you're shy, you don't have an action bias, right? And if you're overconfident, right? They didn't just say confident, they said overconfident. They may or may not, but what would you assume? What would you guess? They have an action bias. Now we have another example. Or if a person has experienced prior negative outcomes where subsequent inaction would be a failure to do something to improve the situation. So what does that mean? Does that make sense to you? The idea of what? If a person has experienced prior negative outcomes, something bad happened to you before. For example, let's say you didn't get your dream score on the TOEFL. Do you have an action bias? Maybe more than you would if you never took the TOEFL before, right? Because maybe if you never took the TOEFL before, you might think, I can do it. I don't need to study so much. But if you take it and it surprises you, oh, I got to work. You develop an action bias. I don't know what I go I'm going to do, but I got to do something. Where subsequent inaction, right, if I don't do anything, would be a failure to do something to improve the situation. So do you recognize that in this back and forth with you, I'm really asking you questions to test your understanding? And what you want to realize, like, for example, going back to this list here, you know, E, right, just kind of for privacy, I just put the first uh, letter of the student because not everybody submitted for YouTube. E says, 23 is my highest score. Why? I speak well. I listen to myself. Why? This is why. Because if, you, if you're not reading and listening in this way, the way you speak is not demonstrating the necessary level of comprehension to get your dream score. So you want to you want to give some respect to these graders. They're trained. Every day they have to take a little exam to make sure that they're rating students well. They're listening to hundreds of recordings week after week. We're not going to trick them. Like they, we're not going to trick them. So they need to hear explanation. And when they do, you get your dream score because it's difficult. And the only way to do that is that you're listening and learning. If you just hear soccer goalkeepers, beautiful, you have the key word, but then you have to understand how does a goalkeeper illustrate action bias? If you didn't understand that listening, that means we have to boost our comprehension. So. Let's go back over here because I said this example was meant to help us with all of this, right? So how is it helping us? The first thing I hope it shows you is that we need to raise our standard if we haven't already. And you know our standard, right? So standard, a level of quality or attainment right? So we need to raise our standard, our expectation of our level of understanding. And it doesn't mean we have to have a giant vocabulary, though we're building it with the series, but I need to digest this. If I, ex if I want my dream score, I have to explain from a place of understanding. So understand first, take note second as a memory tool. And so if you're not taking any notes and you're still not understanding, we need to improve our comprehension, right? Then you need to review all the techniques that we have to boost your skills at Noteful or whatever material you're using. 
right? We have a student earned a 25 excellent, wants a 28, wants questions to practice and review. So remember, below this video, you have the link to record your um, question request for help. And also, all the different links about how to connect with Noteful, our site, our free course, which has plenty of questions for you to practice. Uh, next month, we have our gold course, which is what we call our evening TOEFL classes. We have classes this Monday from when this video was launched for the TOEFL writing. Uh, we have our self-study materials, so the resources you need are there, both free, just for the basics, and register for everything, right? So the next student says, how do I give my top answer on my first try, right? How do I ID keywords? How do I summarize? I really hope that was clear in what we explained because that was the point. Your first try comes from being calm, but more important, it comes from understanding. Because when you explain from your understanding, even though you may not be smooth, you may hesitate, you may repeat yourself, you may have some ums and uhs, the quality of your answer on your first try is there because your understanding on your first try is going to be just so strong that when you repeat the question, your understanding may be getting a little better, but it's almost the same. What's getting better is your comfort, your habits. So to make your first try your best try is when you concentrate most on understanding. Then you're maybe not as smooth, but your answer is enough to get your dream score. So everything else here, you know, uh, in the link below, as I said before, I'd love to concentrate on everything, but I think this helps too because when you have trouble with time management, oftentimes it's when you try to say everything and you don't know the main point. Because if you know the main point, you can finish quickly and on time. So let's train that a little bit right now. And this is the general practice that we want to have. So when you want to master time management, you know you have a minute on the TOEFL to explain everything, right? So what I want us to do now, because we explained this in detail, you can rewind, you know, you can rewind, you can go back in the video, you can listen to the lecture again, and you can take notes. And so you feel more confident in your ability to answer. Or if you want to test yourself just right now, I want you to do your best to explain action bias as you learned in 40 seconds, just like that. So for calm energy, deep breath together. Repeat after me, I can do it. And begin speaking now. All right, and so what I'm going to do now is just relax. We're training. And what you can do if you really want to make the next TOEFL your last, and you may say you have trouble with time management, you have some stress that comes up to you with the timer, you know, after you watch, like, just get used to it. After you watch a movie, you know, by yourself, or, you know, just take out your phone, you know, open up your stopwatch, set it for one minute, and summarize the movie in one minute. You know, summarize... Uh, did you like the movie or dislike the movie? You know, use specific reasons and examples. You have 45 seconds. Uh, at the end of the day, it would be great. Summarize maybe how was the day? What were the two biggest things you enjoyed? You know, 45 seconds, start the timer. Summarize your day, one minute. So whatever it is you're challenged with, sometimes you have to, as we say, think outside the box. And remember, think outside the box means we need to be a little creative because if you're studying 
hard for the TOEFL. Sometimes we have a lot of strategies to do this, but sometimes you need to s change things to kind of wake yourself up a little bit because if we don't do that, our next TOEFL may not be our last. We have to find a way to break through. If time management is an issue, we set our goal. Time ma I'm, I've mastered time management. My time management is my strength. It's not my weakness. So think in an original or creative way. So now, 40 seconds, my turn. I take my deep breath. I can do it, and I begin. In the lecture, we learned about action bias, which is a propensity for people to do something rather than nothing. And to illustrate this, we learned, for example, about soccer goalkeepers who have an action bias that isn't towards their advantage because statistically, if when the player kicks, they stay in place, they'll do better than if they jump right or left, but they often jump right or left because of their action bias. We also learned that overconfident people and people with prior negative outcomes have an action bias. Now you see what I did at the end there, right? Overconfident people and people with a negative outcome. My level of training gives me a sense that with that much time, I can be calm, but I can't say anything extra. I got to get to the point. Now I've mentioned everything, right? And I'm speaking to really try to explain it well. So that's why we say you got to train the same question over and over. Sometimes you might want to jump to a different question. We need to spend four to six hours, four, six to 12 hours on one question, not to memorize it, but to use it as a training tool so that we're able to succeed on another one. So what we can do now is we can give ourselves 20 seconds. 20 seconds, right? We challenge yourself. 20 seconds to say everything. We can do it. So your turn, then my turn, right? So your turn, deep breath. I can do it and begin. All right, so how was that? It's tough, right? But this is time management because time management means I know how to get to the point. If you think you will say everything that you said in 40 seconds to 20 seconds, it's my opportunity, my gift to tell you, no, nobody can. So what's the difference between hearing something that will take you two minutes to explain and saying it in 60 seconds? saying something that took you 40 seconds and 20. You say less, but you still say what's important to teach the idea. So my turn to try to illustrate that the best I can. So I take my deep breath. I can do it, and I begin. In this lecture, we learn about action bias, which is a tendency that people have, some people, to do something instead of nothing. And we hear several examples to illustrate this. Goalkeepers who jump to the right or left rather than stay still. Overconfident people and others. Right? So you see how I summarized. And I didn't have a chance to say people who had a negative outcome. But I said others illustrating my understanding. Can we do better than that in 20 seconds? Maybe. But what I want you to understand is a time limit is a purposeful limit on you of how much you can say. If you speak quickly to rush and it can't, it can't be understood clearly because you're speaking too fast, keeps your score down. Calm, controlled, saying what's important, saying every major point to explain something, letting other details that don't fit go away without any stress and you get your dream score. So going back over here, 
we see this. I hope that this exercise has helped you understand how do we get to the next level on our speaking. You can get the grader to give you the 4 out of 4. You can get your 26, 28, 30 out of 30. We have students who've gotten from 22 to 30 out of 30 on the speaking. You can too. This way. How do you take notes for the listening, speaking, or writing sections? Understand first. Take notes second. How do you focus on time management and stress? Just realize the time is the limit for everybody, myself included. It's not about saying everything. It's about teaching calmly. So you don't have to stress about saying so much. Now, another thing that I want to do for all of you under, under pressure, right? It's going to be a bit longer video than I wanted it to be, but, you know, I want to cover everything and, and gradually learn how to make this series more powerful for you. So as you know, sometimes it's tough to study so many hours every week, ideally 24 plus hours a week, right? Because that's the number of hours over 12 years that we learned is this beautiful number that creates progress, momentum, where what you learned last week, you studied so much, you remember this week. What you're studying this week, you can master because you have enough time. You can study every section. But some of us can't do that. That's okay. So find little ways to help yourself. For example, here's a site that I really enjoy, uh, a classical music radio station from New York. So my little gift to you, because I think sometimes when we're studying, you know, uh, we train you that 25%, 20% of your study time, especially if you're going to take the TOEFL in the test center now or in the future, or if you have noisy neighbors and you're going to take the home-based TOEFL, 20% of your study time should be with distracting music in the background, music you don't like. Not very loud, but n loud enough to where you have to force yourself to pay attention to what you're reading or what you're listening. It's a powerful tool. But then the other 80%, you want to encourage yourself. You want to enjoy the experience. So you might listen to classical music in the background. So I'll link this below, and it'll be a cool way for us to be connected because you'll know as you're listening, so are other TOEFL students around the world. As you're listening, so is the Noteful team. So we're all in it together. And, you know, it's just a lot of classical music just enjoying the experience learning as you go and trying to use the TOEFL to benefit your life not only because the score that it will allow you to move forward but the skills that you're developing so when you start to do this the pressure starts to decrease you start to enjoy it a little more and when you take the exam just keep taking your deep breaths Every time you feel stressed in the reading, listening, speaking, writing, and you'll be able to produce your results. So finally, the last thing that I want to share, you know, for everybody who's working on success, fundamentally, ideally, study the best you can 24 plus hours a week, right? In our diamond course, just to show you, uh, in, masterful, in the masterful study section where you see here, we go into great detail about how to do this. Basics to success, how to set your study schedule, how to study for maximum results, 24 plus hours a week, taking a break every 55 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes, keep your mind awake and sharp, how to manage your performance on the exam, deal with stress, how to have the right perspective because you're special. You're watching this because you have weeks or months of hard study to defeat your TOEFL, a requirement for you to move forward in your future. You don't have the gift that some people have of kind of doing your best and being able to use that score. You have a tough requirement, a tough minimum. You can do it. So everything that about NOTEFL is about you. So we're not, you know, quick prep. We're deep prep for big results. And that takes time, energy, and focus like that here. This is kind of a favorite image, <laughs> right? Someone gradually getting stronger with every week. So you start here and then you wind up here and you get your dream score. So again, let's conclude. I hope you enjoyed 
the lesson so far, the way we dug into things. Again, below this video, I'm going to share all the links to the resources that I used, the behavioral economics website, um, you know, our diamond course, our free course, where to submit your recording to have us hear it for feedback for you and more. And so if you like the video, if it was helpful, don't forget to support us with that thumbs up. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you're always alerted to when the next video is up, episode four. And as I, as I said before, our goal is every week. Very happy we had this uh, a week after the previous video. And so next Thursday is our goal for the next lesson, episode four. But it might take us two weeks. It just depends on the schedule and, and kind of getting things started. So no, our goal is every Thursday. But every now and then we might need a week just to catch up with other things at Noteful. But just so you're aware. And now our vocabulary, of course. So the words that we used from previous episodes we didn't bring back. So just kind of motivation for you to you to look at the, the ones that we had before. We'll link to you below the video as well. And so the words we covered were hybrid, right? When we mix two or more things, fundamental changing how we listen fundamentally, listening so we understand the fundamentals of what we're learning. We learned the word bias, right, which is similar to the propensity to do something. A bias tends to have a slightly negative sense, a prejudice. Propensity seems to be a little bit more neutral, but it can be for something that maybe is a bad habit. So bias and propensity are both like a habit towards something. Uh, bias is a little more the way we think. Uh, propensity is a little more towards habit, but they're really almost synonyms there. Intuitive, something that comes to us naturally. We want to train so that we're kind of intuitive with the TOEFL, so skillful. Standard, kind of the basis of measurement of something, how we measure one thing against others, our level of quality. So we talked about for success, to defeat our TOEFL, we want to raise our standard. And our expression, think outside the box. If you want to overcome some challenges, sometimes you want to think outside the box. If stress is really a big factor for us, uh, we're, we need to improve our score by 15 points, it might be worth it to invest in a book on stress management, right? And, and read it as part of your TOEFL studies. Build your vocabulary. Have a more serious look at that because that's going to benefit you for the rest of your life. So again, that's why TOEFL Talk is here, to, to support you on the longer journey, to really help you to improve faster, improve how you study with the resources you have, and get more out of your TOEFL journey. And so think outside the box, just to give you a sense, you know, our box is kind of our little world, the natural way we think. So to think outside of it is this idea of something fresh or something new. So we finished with our vocab. We talked about partnership, and now we tech connect with the idea of how to move forward. So everybody, make sure that you have what you need to continue. For those of you here just on YouTube, click and then go to our site. When you go to TOEFL Prep under Self-Study Training, when you click on that, you'll see our free course. You'll see our Diamond course to register for. For those of you already in the Diamond course at Noteful, you're studying hard. Remember, we have, and everybody, we have our writing classes this Monday. We can help you with your essay, work very hard together. We have our classes for November, all four sections. We can defeat the TOEFL before 2021. We have our small group tutoring schedule. We have a few spaces open for the reading and for the writing next month so we can work closely together. We have English strengthening to build your vocabulary and your grammar as as always there. So make sure you go down, get the help you need. It was a pleasure. I hope you're enjoying the series. We're learning how to kind of work with it. Maybe by episode 15, which I hope you pass the TOEFL by then, it'll be kind of different, a little smoother, but still enjoying it. And I hope you are too. So it was a pleasure. Until next week, maybe too, but likely next week, study hard. No, you're not alone. It's not easy, but you can do it. Keep it up. Your dream score is coming. Until next time, from the Noteful team, bye-bye.